again everybody. Welcome to another Mark Harville Art Painting Tutorial. I'm glad you could join me today. And uh, I ask you as usual, please subscribe if you've not done so. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up and please share it as well. That helps me to kind of build my uh, community here on YouTube. So in this episode, I want to talk to you about this painting. And uh, this is actually a commission. So uh, the gentleman who called me as an author wanted to put uh, this painting concept uh, he had in his mind in a book. And so uh, specifically he just said he needed to have uh, Dracula and Frankenstein's monster battling. And so that was really all the uh, detail instruction that I received and I was able to receive quite a bit of leeway on what I wanted to do to put that together and so this was my vision right here. And I think this is a good example of when when you do commissions you might get some very interesting unique requests at times and this one was both challenging but also a lot of fun and I'm not usually doing monsters or classic monsters, but I had a great time doing it. And so in this video, I just want to show you how I put this painting together. So without further ado, let's get started. So we've got a little uh, 18 by 24 inch canvas here and I'm just adding a little kind of gray tone to it here on the background, let that dry and just beginning to paint on here some nice dark clouds. So I've, I've painted or I've mixed together just a nice dark kind of gray. It's kind of a pans gray uh, with a little bit of black in it as well and um, then I'm going right back over that with just a highlight. I um, used that same Payne's Gray uh, color, but added just a little bit of teal to it and a little bit of uh, titanium white, and that will give us the highlight. And we can begin to form out these clouds real quickly here in the sky. And of course, as they move closer to the moon, then they'll just get a little bit brighter. I'm, using my airbrush here just to bring a little bit of haze. I'll use this quite a bit in the painting for fog effect and um, just some softening. So um, get this moon kind of painted in here. I'm using nearly a pure white for that. And again, this, this whole painting is in acrylic, so um, even the paint and the airbrush is, is acrylic uh, airbrush paint. And so to spend a little bit of time here kind of adding additional highlights specifically around the moon since it's going to be a lot closer. It's going to be a little bit brighter in that area. And then I'll go back later and actually increase the size of this moon. Um, I just wanted it to be a little bigger specifically when I bring the bats in. So um, I will go back and adjust the size of that moon. So I started by painting in here this castle and what you're going to see me do is I'm going to begin painting this castle and then I decide a little bit later that I don't really like it too much uh, and, and I go back and adjust it. So right now kind of what I'm doing is I'm just kind of bringing in the, the original kind of concept that I had and then just decided that it just didn't quite fit what I was wanting and so went back and changed that up just slightly. Uh, so I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit later in the painting. But started off with uh, just black uh, paint here and let that dry and then kind of bring in that same sort of teal color, um, mixing um, a little bit of that teal, titanium white, and also some, some raw umber. And then I'm going to start coming out and silhouetting some of the woods and trees kind of surrounding that, coming down this cliff a little bit, get a little bit of airbrushing in, softening some things, bring in kind of a little bit more land structures here, and I'll come back with the airbrush and 
do a little bit more softening and adding some fog. But right now I'm just kind of can just really building out my my composition. And so this is where I didn't like the castle, so I, I wanted to change it up a little bit. I, I left part of it, but I just wanted to sort of change, um, have some some taller kind of walls and and turrets and so forth. So, um, and that's the great beauty uh, of painting. You know, you don't like something, go back and change it. Don't be afraid to do that. And uh, I just needed to step back from it, kind of look at it for a little bit and, and make that decision for myself. That's pretty common for me. So kind of the same approach here, adding the black, letting it dry, bringing in that that uh, desaturated sort of teal color and bringing in a little bit of uh, highlighting, silver lining from the moon. And um, that'll kind of, I, I, I think I was just a lot, a lot more happy uh, with that at this point in time, bringing a couple of those, those yellow lit up windows, add a little bit of contrast, and, uh, and that's really all I wanted to do on that castle. So I'm kind of darkening my clouds there, getting a little bit more silhouette, and then now I can start really bringing in some more tree structures, some large branches, and this is all done in black, and it's going to be a very dark painting. This is nighttime, of course. It's going to be kind of spooky. So um, just having a lot of silhouette. This is where I'm bringing in some of these bats now. And um, this was actually a request by the clients as well, um, which I failed to mention in the intro was he did want some bats and and so brought brought in several of these bats and just it's mostly silhouette, a little bit of form, but not too much really. Not not going to put too much effort into that. All right, so I sort of sketched out very loosely where we're going to have our monsters. I'm kind of trying to build around their bodies here with this background somewhat. Um, wanted to have some outcroppings of some kind of land masses, more of these these. Um, trees in the background really wanted to kind of create this kind of dense forest that um, just had several uh, layers um, of value going there bring in another kind of silhouetted dark tree here in the background and wanted to create bring in lots of limbs and branches here and and now I can kind of go back and highlight with that teal color, um, some of the silver lining from the moonlight on these trees now. And really it's just kind of trying to build this whole composition and this background around the monsters. I, I knew I kind of wanted them off to the left in the foreground somewhat, kind of off center. And, um, and then just kind of bring in this this background sort of around their bodies. That way I I just kind of wanted to know where I was going to be heading with this because honestly I had a very loose idea about where I wanted to go with um, the the composition, but it was it was just kind of a loose idea. And I've been thinking about it a while, playing with some some ideas and um, and so even getting started, I wasn't totally certain where I was heading. I just wanted to see if I could just allow this whole painting to really kind of materialize as I, as I started working on it. And I started getting kind of ideas as I was moving along, which is kind of exciting as well. A little bit of inspiration um, from heaven, <laughs> really. Um, but but moving on here now, I've got the, the water in and now I'm bringing in some of this this graveyard and we've got um, sort of this wrought iron fencing, this old fencing we often see in some of these ancient uh, graveyards. And um, just forming this out real quickly, getting it, again, mostly highlighting it, mostly in, sh in, in silhouette and in shadow. Don't need to spend an enormous amount of time uh, with it. And uh, just keeping that sort of dark... Um, kind of flow. 
So we're going to bring in this graveyard now, and I wanted to scumble in a little bit of, of movement into the kind of the grasses and the dirt here. Um, again, still just using that dark desaturated teal, which was, again, umber, teal, a little bit of white, a little bit of black, mix that together, get this real dark sort of umber or dark sort of uh, teal color. And... Um, then I can start going over it with some highlights. And it was just an idea of just um, dry brushing this on and, and just creating some movement in the ground. Now I can start bringing in these, um, these gravestones. And I'm just painting all this in black to start with, um, which I think is just the easiest way. When I do this, I can let that dry, then start painting over it with some more of that kind of tealish, uh, brownish teal color, and begin to uh, bring in those subtle highlights for, for those stones as well. Wanted to make sure we had our shadows getting cast uh, from the moonlight as well. Make sure to think about um, those stretch shadows and the direction they're gonna be going from that moon. So. I uh, wanted to make sure I had that on point. And then um, using my comber brush here, just kind of bringing in a little bit of grasses, a little bit of stippling, just kind of get some some structure and and um, wanted to have just some, some interesting little effects here on the ground. But this is where I'm coming in and kind of adding that bluish gray tone now and um, starting to form that three-dimensional kind of structure on these where it's going to be shadowed and dark on the right side and kind of kind of lit up uh, or somewhat backlit with some highlights and some silver lining a little bit here as well and that's what's going to kind of give it that three-dimensional effect somewhat. So I'll just kind of play with this for a bit. And it wasn't really, I didn't even plan to bring in a zombie. That was one of the little inspirations I had. I knew I wanted to bring in a bit of a graveyard. Um, and it wasn't until a little bit later as I was thinking about um, stepping back and looking at the painting. And I'll do that often. I'll just kind of step back and I'll sit there for 10, 15, 20 minutes just kind of looking at it and making some decisions like right here I'm bringing in some airbrushing for some fog now I had this idea well let's just bring a, a kind of this this living dead this zombie come coming out of the ground um, and I kind of thought you know as as um, Dracula's fighting with Frankenstein's monster you know maybe he's using some of his his vampire powers calling on the dead to come out to assist him, calling on his bats. They're kind of swooping in, just getting extra help uh, to defeat uh, Frankenstein's monsters. That's kind of where I began to go with this, but that wasn't something I'd originally planned. And it's just one of those things which kind of materialized as I was looking for a little bit of inspiration. So I always like to try to stay fairly uh, loose and um, keep my options open a little bit and not get so so kind of tight and structured in, in, in a certain painting that I'm not open to bringing in extra little bits or changes on the fly. Okay, so now I've kind of really drawn out uh, the monsters now here and, and I really can see exactly where they're going to go and I can start to finish painting around them. Um, and that way, uh, you know, as I get this worked in, then I can more easily bring these guys in. Um, and I just prefer it this way. I like to get the backgrounds in first before I start bringing in foreground because I really don't like to have to paint around things quite as much. I sometimes feel like it's a little bit almost cookie cutter when I do it that way, or it, it does. It doesn't really sometimes uh, blend in the way I want. So. Uh, with this in mind, I can just get all of this foreground and this midground and most of the background kind of worked in and then bring in the main characters. And working on a little bit more grasses, make sure I have some overlap, making sure I have some contrast, bring in some little 
pebbles and stones and so forth. And now I feel like I'm at a point where I can begin to paint in the monsters. Now I started with that same kind of dark teal color and I painted Frankenstein in sort of in that color and then I started thinking, you know, I, I don't want him to blend in that much with the background. I want him to stand out a little bit more. And so what you're going to see me do is I'll paint him in and then a little bit later I'm going to go back with a little bit of a bolder green and change the color of that uh, underpainting on that skin. And it just was uh, something I, I had to kind of have that epiphany as I painted it in first and then realized that he just seemed to be blending in just a little bit too much with the background. But I can block all these guys in now. Um, I'm going to block them in all dark to start with. And we can get Dracula now too. And with his skin, I'm, I just uh, create a kind of a very grayish purple, kind of almost like a, a, a bit of a grayish lavender uh, for his skin because he's going to be pretty pale, but I needed to have a good pale um, dark underpainting for him. So that's kind of the color I'm using there. And of course his cape is going to kind of be crimson. So I'm using, um, I'm using some primrose and also alizarin crimson with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, tad bit of black, mix that together. It kind of really um, desaturates that crimson color. Now this is where I'm coming back and changing that green. Now, I can just get a little bit more contrast now so he's not, you know, once again, not blending in as much to that background as he had been with the uh, with that more teal color. So just kind of changing here as we go and then I can continue to uh, block in the rest of the monsters now. I don't need to be real close in approximation with my colors necessarily. I'm just trying to get mostly close to what I need. Um, I will have a couple um, glazes I'll bring in later. So we can kind of finish out him here, get his hand kind of worked in like he's going to be raising it to swipe at, at Frankenstein's monster. And uh, of course he's wearing this nice, this nice suit. So we got to get his nice suit. Um, you know, it's always it's it's beyond me why an immortal being would want to dress in in a full suit, three piece suit, um, all the time. But you know, he's going to do what he wants to do because he's Dracula. So it all works out. But uh, you know, just keeping that kind of classic monster effect that we're all so accustomed to seeing back in the old movies and so forth. So he's he's dressed to the to the nines on this one. Get the rest of his cape kind of painted in now and blocked in that dark crimson color. And uh, for his for his vest and shirt, of course I just used kind of a, a, a bluish uh, kind of a Payne's gray and blue for that to keep it nice and dark. All right, so we're gonna bring in, we're gonna really start now. What I've done is I've, <clears throat> I've moved from my acrylic palette. I've, I'm getting ready to start with my oil palette. I wanted to first get his eye in real quickly because I'm gonna have this kind of bright electric eye for Frankenstein, like he's kind of charged by lightning, right? Because that's how, he, how Dr. Frankenstein um, brought him to life. And um, now what you're seeing me do is I have switched to my oil palette. Now this could have all been done in acrylic as well, but I really enjoy bringing oils. I like painting with oils, specifically when it comes to figure painting and um, because I need to have that extra drying time. I need to have that blending time that I just don't get quite as well with acrylics. Um, but again, it's still possible. You just may need to work a little harder at it. Um, I'm taking the lazy man's route. So um, switching to the oil palette now. So from this point on, as I start to paint the monsters and they're gonna be painted the rest of the way, all the detail 
uh, in oil paint. And I'm using my Alkyd oil so they dry fairly quickly. Usually within 24 hours they're touch dry and I can go back if I need to and change things up. I'm kind of just doing a wet on wet kind of technique here right over the the acrylic underpainting. Um, and so working on this hand here, I've just brought in various shades of that lighter green. Um, I think what I used for this is I, I used um, sap green, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of titanium white, um, as well as some cad yellow medium. And, um, and that's kind of what I'm bringing in here. So start to work around the face now using those colors and and um, I'm just kind of jumping back. As I move to more into the shadow area and away from the moonlight, I've kind of moved more toward the cooler blues uh, just to kind of get that cooler, darker effect in that green. Um, I like to pre-mix these things on my palette. So um, I got a small little pile of kind of that same uh, sap greenish um, pile, but also having mixed in a little bit of the blue into it as well. And I can jump back and forth between my lights and my darks. I'm actually using two different uh, number zero round brushes for that. I've got one for the dark, um, and then I've got one for my highlights. That way I'm not kind of muddying things up here, and I'm not using any medium. I'm just wiping it off on a paper towel as I start to bring this together. I'm also using this tiny little filbert brush. I like filbert brushes, especially on larger surfaces because I can get some really good softened effect. Uh, I can really blend well with it. So you'll see me kind of jumping between my, my round number zero brushes with the tiny heads and also my tiny little filbert brush. Okay, so I'm gonna abandon uh, Frankenstein's monster for a bit. I'm gonna work on the head here now on Dracula. So gonna start here up high on the head bring in you know some of these highlights and might you know again my highlights are gonna just be kind of a, a very pale kind of um, almost uh, I guess a kind of a lavender a very pale bright lavender to start coming in here and adding some subtle highlights here but you'll see that I'm leaving a lot of that underpainting showing through that's gonna help me with creating that three dimension on his face and so I can start kind of working here back and forth bringing in some dark and then bringing in my lights here a little bit and starting to form this head out and later on I'll be bringing in some some pure white just for some silver lining but I use the pure white very sparingly as you can imagine it it can be very overpowering so you just want to use it as kind of your tonal best and, and kind of for the the final brightest uh, highlights here but you can see I'm using my tiny little um, rigger brush now. I need, you know, I, I'm working really small, especially in the eye region. Um, it's, it's almost dotting on just little touches of paint. So I'm trying to get those little delicate features in because it's not very large of a surface on his face, his little fingers and hands. And so I'm just trying to use these tiny little head brushes and that helps me to achieve kind of bringing in this fine detail. Now what's gonna happen is later on I'll come back with some glazing and I'll bring in some further shadowing and I'll adjust some of the colors a little bit as well. Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of discuss that a little bit as I get into that part of, of this tutorial, which I've not, you know, that'll, I'll save that for the very end. Um, and I'll let this dry as well overnight that way. You know, you never want to bring glazes in on, on wet paint and you'll have a big muddy mess. So it's good to make sure you're fully dry before you bring those in. So now I can bring in some of these um, stitches. You know, he's, he's uh, been pieced together by, by Dr. Frankenstein. So um, kind of bringing that, those little those little details and I wanted to wait till he was a little more dry before I did that and so now I can start working on his suit now one thing I'll mention about this suit as I bring it in is I've, I've mixed together a sort of an olive uh, green right now but for the highlights um, I used kind of a, a 
gold green, which is a brighter green. And what you'll see me do is uh, I'm beginning to add it here right now so you can kind of see that brighter green. Um, and it wasn't until later I just kind of realized it was a little too warm for this scene. This is a dark nighttime scene and and that that kind of brighter green, kind of almost like a limish green, it, it was just entirely too too bright and too warm. And it was really mostly just being too warm of a color. I needed to bring in some cool colors. And so what I'm going to do later on, and I actually didn't show it on the video. I did it later after I had the epiphany that it just didn't look quite right, um, was I glaze on some ultramarine blue right over that, that bright green. And it really knocked it back and cooled it down a lot. But I just don't show that. Okay, so I'm bringing in some electricity coming out of his eye. Just thought that might be a cool touch since it was lightning that kind of brought him to life. And we can start working now on on Dracula's cape. It's got these really this really large collar on it here. I thought was kind of cool and and bring in some silver lining here with some titanium white and just add some some basic highlights now. That will help it to kind of give that illusion that he's getting kind of backlit by that moonlight. So I'm, I've got this um, a brighter shade of that that lavender and starting to kind of scumble that on too. Now this, um, I also add, later on add a little bit of blue to it with through glazes just to cool it down. And I, and I really went more or less over all of the gray of his suit, all of the white of his suit with some nice blues that I glazed over it using my my Liquin original and and that just helped to cool everything down. I did that when I when I was working on Frankenstein's monster. But right now it's really just let's get the color in, get it kind of close. It's not exactly right, but that's okay. We can fix the color matching with glazes later on. And that's fairly customary for me to do that. Um, anyway, because I think the glazes lend to just softening things really nicely at the very end. I can start bringing some subtle highlights in now to his jacket and his suit uh, jacket. Um, just kind of working that around. I'm using that filbert brush again. I'm just adding very minute amounts of paint. Really, there's not much paint on it at all. I'm actually wiping a lot off on my paper towel. And then I'm just letting the canvas, um, the grain of the canvas, just kind of remove the paint off the brush as I as I kind of brush it on. And that helps to keep that very subtle and very soft. You can see me doing that here in the in the pant region now too. Get a little bit of those wrinkles in. And I've got a lighter version of the crimson now that I can start bringing in the folds um, as well of his of his cape. So I'm um, getting, you know, pretty close here to getting done uh, with, with the painting. And um, I'll just bring in some final glazing. This is me bringing in a little bit of fog. And I'm using um, that liquid original going over that. Since this is now oil paint, I can't use acrylic to bring in the fog like I was with the airbrush. So I'm just kind of softening that on. And this is where I'm glazing a little bit now and darkening some things up, bringing in some more shadow. And uh, that'll kind of finish us off. So I appreciate you tuning in. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I know it's something different and unique, but um, thank you so much. And I look forward to sharing a new video real soon with you. So please subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.